Let us now start uh, the discussion on electron transfer. And electron transfer as we will see uh, these kind of reactions are also dynamically influenced by the solvent. So for electron transfer reactions uh, the mechanism for electron transfer reaction particularly involving this uh, transition metal ions uh, was proposed uh, by Henry Taube and this kind of mechanism is uh, known as uh, inner sphere electron transfer. I am just writing uh, instead of electron I am writing E minus. Now what is ele inner sphere electron transfer? So, uh, let us consider a uh, classic example, uh, let us say this uh, cobalt complex, uh, cobalt chloride. Uh, 2 plus and it reacts with uh, chromium hexapyl complex to give rise to cobalt 1 water ammonia 5 2 plus plus chromium chlorine H2O whole 5 this will be H2O6 2 plus all right so let us first figure out uh, which one is the oxidant and which one is the reductant in this uh, equation so if you look at the cobalt complex first now you see there is a 2 plus uh, charge and so the chloride uh, it is a negative one, ammonia is a neutral ligand. So definitely the uh, cobalt is in oxidation state of plus 3. Now for chromium it is very straightforward because water is a neutral ligand. So chromium is in oxidation state of plus 2 in this complex. Now in the product as you can see cobalt, water uh, and pentaamine. So, uh, these are all neutral ligands. So, cobalt is oxidation state plus 2 and for chromium complex the chloride has minus 1 charge. So, it is in plus 3 oxidation state. So, as you can see the cobalt is uh, undergoing uh, here plus 3 to plus 2. So, it is uh, reducing and the chromium is undergoing an oxidation and what is interesting here which Taube noted is that this uh, role of this uh, chloride uh, ion. So as you can see this uh, chloride atom as if uh, it is in this reaction is uh, mediating the oxidation or reduction and uh, this chloride ion uh, where it is located it is located at the first uh, coordination sphere because this is a ligand directly attached to the metal atom initially it was attached to the cobalt and finally it is attached to the chromium. And then Tobe said the electron transfer in this case uh, where actually we have uh, a redox couple and then the electron transfer is being mediated by this ligand which is the chloride uh, ligand Cl minus. So uh, since it is a ligand which is actually a part of the inner uh, coordination sphere. So this type of mechanism uh, is known as inner sphere electron transfer. And there uh, actually Tobe uh, hypothesized and which was also found uh, later experimentally correct that some kind of uh, complex or the intermediate complex is formed where you have the cobalt and, and as you can see in the uh, starting uh, point that cobalt I have 5 ammonia in the end also cobalt I have 5 ammonia and only thing is that one uh, water molecule replaces one uh, chlorine. So uh, we can write it something like this. Similarly for the chromium also as you can see that uh, there are 6 water molecules and there are 1 chlorine and 5 water molecules. So basically you can think that uh, this uh, water molecule uh, is uh, basically replaced by the chloride uh, ion and uh, you have a chromium and the 5 water molecules are kind of intact and then you have a chloride ion which is breezing this uh, uh, cobalt and the chromium centers. So this is called a, a mu uh, bridging thing because it's a it's the chloride ion is basically connecting the two centers. So this kind of mu uh, chloride complexes is an intermediate in this case, 
and uh, as if what it is what is being uh, the, what is being uh, found here uh, what uh, Henry Taube proposed is that uh, this chloride atom or this is bridging chloride atom is as if uh, the electron transfer is uh, mediated through this uh, bridging uh, complex which is mediated by this uh, chloride atom. So uh, finally you will see this uh, water molecule is uh, here it is being removed as you can see and again it is uh, being added. So as if the reaction proceeded uh, through this pathway. And uh, this kind of electron transfer again uh, as the name suggests uh, it is a mechanism of, it is obvious from the mechanism that it is mediated by the uh, ligand which is uh, a part of the inner sphere. Uh, for this work uh, Henry Taube won the 1963 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. But since we talked about the inner sphere uh, electron transfer there should be something known as outer sphere but the inner sphere is kind of intact and the outer sphere let us just take a uh, very simple example like uh, like say for example this uh, iron uh, oxidation or reduction. So iron from plus 3 oxidation state gets reduced to iron uh, plus 2 oxidation state and as you can see the ligand of the inner sphere is still intact and uh, this uh, was uh, basically uh, this kind of reactions which are uh, which were categorized uh, as uh, from as evident from this uh, stoichiometry as the outer sphere electron transfer because people thought that electron transfer is mediated as if uh, some external uh, thing which is right uh, residing not in the inner sphere but in the outer sphere because the inner sphere is still intact which is uh, the six uh, water molecules that forms the inner sphere. So, uh, in this case uh, it is a 3 plus complex, let me just redraw it once again. And then finally we have a 2 plus complex and it is kind of a direct electron transfer not mediated via a, a ligand. Now uh, for this uh, Rudy Marcus actually uh, developed a theory. Uh, which is very widely known as uh, the Marcus theory, Rudolf Marcus. And this theory was developed in the age 1950s. Now, uh, this is the same Marcus who developed the RRKM theory, and there is a connection because this is also related to the transition state theory. Because if you remember, uh, the Marcus theory, which we again did not discuss in its uh, full glory and uh, because of uh, this was very much out of scope for the for this course. Uh, now uh, we only showed what are the Marcus expression but we emphasize that Marcus made a connection of the RRK model which was based uh, on uh, the model that we have S uh, uncoupled harmonic oscillators. So that uh, model too uh, he said uh, basically it is uh, connected there is a connection with uh, this uh, harmonic oscillator model with the transition state model and he successfully made that connection. So in the electron transfer theory also he uh, uh, basically borrowed the idea of uh, transition state and the potential energies for uh, potential energy surface that we will uh, see in a moment. So this was developed in 1950s onward but uh, for that uh, Marcus got the Nobel Prize in 1992. Uh, it took long years because uh, of some reason and we will discuss also what is the reason. Now suppose uh, for any general electron transfer reaction suppose I have a donor and I have an acceptor and what happens is that first the donor and the acceptor comes close together and then they form a kind of complex this is known as a association complex. Association complex. Now uh, once this association complex is formed then uh, there is an electron transfer from the donor to the acceptor. So then the donor gets a positive charge because of the electron loss and the acceptor gets a negative charge because of the gain in electron and then they uh, get uh, separated. So uh, if the reaction uh, or the, uh, the red determining step is this step that the formation of the association complex 
Then the entire thing is basically uh, controlled how the uh, uh, reactants are coming closer together. So again, this will be something like uh, diffusion mediated, the red uh, will be diffusion mediated. However, if this is the red determining step where actually the electron transfer from donor to acceptor is the red determining step, then actually uh, uh, the question is how depending on the free energies of the donor and the acceptor, the rate of the reaction will change and that we are going to discuss. So you are assuming that this uh, step is the rate determining step. You can and actually write it uh, all these uh, uh, steps as a reversible steps uh, in the sense that uh, there could be association complex and they can uh, fall apart. There could be electron transfer and there could be back electron transfer and all these things. So we are assuming this uh, in this case that the rate determining step is the electron transfer step itself. Now let us think uh, what are the free energies or the relative free energies for the donor and the acceptor. So we'll just draw a diagram and few uh, notations for that. So uh, again uh, the donor has some electronic uh, energy. Let's say uh, this is the donor electronic energy and I uh, am leveling my energy scale which is shown here as the zero of energy with re where actually the donor energy is minimum and also this coordinate uh, now this coordinate is uh, the electron transfer coordinate now uh, again it, it could be a combination of many vibrational modes so this coordinate uh, is the electron transfer coordinate and this coordinate may be a combination of many vibrational uh, degrees of freedom or vibrational modes it may not be a single coordinate but those combinations we are showing it as if it's a, a linear combination of this vibrational coordinate which gives you an effective one dimensional uh, reactive coordinate which is the electron transfer coordinate and again where the donor uh, electronic energies are minimum I call that uh, position as say zero. So that now the donor will of course have some vibrational uh, motion with respect to the uh, this uh, organize, reorganization of the solvents around it and I am just uh, assuming here that these uh, vibrational motions are all uh, harmonic in the sense that I have a parabola. This is just like the intramolecular vibration. So uh, we are. This is basically uh, the same thing applied to the for the intermolecular vibrations. But the assumption is the same that I have a harmonic motion there and also I have a harmonic motion here. So this is basically the donor parabola. So I'm just labeling it as D. Maybe we can use some other color uh, just to make sure that uh, uh, we have a sufficient. Uh, distinguishing feature. So this is suppose the donor parabola. This drawing is not very good. So you can try uh, drawing once again the donor parabola. So it will be something like this is better. And then we also have an acceptor parabola which is something like this. So this is acceptor parabola and this is the donor parabola. Now uh, again uh, where the acceptor uh, energy is minimum so that coordinate let us call it as uh, x double prime so again x is the electron transfer coordinate and e is the free energy and uh, also we see that at the point the donor and the acceptor uh, potential energy surfaces these are all one dimensional potential energy surfaces uh, with the harmonic approximation and that intersection let us call it as uh, position x prime and now we see that uh, we have several things uh, so we have also an acceptor uh, minima which is somewhere here and since we called the donor uh, energy to be zero let us say that the acceptor is stabilized uh, by an amount which I am calling is uh, as this energy gap as delta g zero. Now delta G0 is the free energy for the reaction donor to acceptor. Now the way I have drawn it actually delta G0 is negative. So the gap or the absolute value of the gap is minus delta G0. And then again uh, we will define one more quantity uh, that is how much energy you need uh, for the donor to cross this uh, donor acceptor uh, I mean cross point. So uh, that is kind of the activation energy for this and we will uh, since this is an activation energy we will use a similar notation I will write it as delta G dagger notation. So we have uh, delta G dagger uh, and we have delta G0 already defined 
And there is also one more uh, interesting parameter and that is if you think that uh, if I just excite the donor vertically and if you see that excitation of uh, donor vertically means uh, the uh, it is an electronic excitation again. So if I move it vertically which means actually I'm not I'm thinking that the solvents are not reorganizing meaning at this energy where I have uh, I mean it when uh, basically I draw a vertical line from the donor minimum to uh, uh, a point where actually it uh, just crosses the acceptor parabola then I see that point means actually this is some energy with uh, respect to the again the donor uh, this is energy of the acceptor but this energy is basically the acceptors energy for the same config same solvent configuration for the donor minimum. So uh, basically you can think uh, let me first uh, draw this and uh, label this energy. So this is this energy and that is known as reorganization energy or you call it as a lambda. So basically lambda tells it is the energy required for the acceptor to uh, go to the same solvent and vibrational uh, I mean uh, inter intramolecular as well as intermolecular degrees of freedom uh, so that uh, to, uh, to tuning of that freedom so that it has the right configuration of the donor ground state geometry. So if you supply that much energy uh, from the uh, uh, from the acceptor to the donor then uh, 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 from the uh, to the acceptor then the acceptor will have some energy which has the same configuration as the donor has and initially there are a lot of discussion people are thinking that this uh, reorganization energy how it basically uh, takes into part uh, how, how it basically takes part into this uh, uh, electron transfer uh, rates and people thought that if I vertically excite the donor and I uh, basically reach the acceptor uh, uh, curve then actually electron transfer will take place but this is not uh, true because uh, what we will see that usually most of the electron transfer reactions are thermally activated not electronically activated but we will still see that this reorganization energy or the lambda actually uh, takes part uh, into that uh, dynamics. So basically this is the reaction uh, free energy a free energy of the reaction. So again this free energy means actually this is a reaction gives free energy. Delta G dagger is nothing but the energy of activation or again it is a free energy of activation and lambda one of the most important parameter is known as a solvent uh, reorganization energy or simply uh, reorganization energy. Now we will find a simple relation uh, between these terms and uh, keeping in mind that the rate constant for electron transfer according to the Eyring equation which is a transition state theory is given by kBT by H into e to the power minus delta G dagger by RT and if you remember there was an equilibrium here uh, be, uh, between these uh, uh, once we did uh, all this uh, interesting calculation. And then we uh, showed uh, when we talked about the thermodynamic in interpretation of the activation uh, tra transition state theory, then we actually arrived at uh, a relation where actually we had this uh, kind of relationship uh, at this equation. Now this kBT by H again is coming from the Eyring equation and this delta G dagger uh, is the uh, free energy of activation. So we all we want is an expression for the delta G dagger with respect to the delta G zero and then we are done. So let us now try to figure out, uh, I mean these are all parabolas so we can actually write uh, the equation like uh, the equation for parabola as you know that is y equal to uh, x square. So actually it is y equal to ax square with some constant but we have drawn it in such a way that uh, everything is scaled uh, to 1 meaning the constant uh, is already absorbed within x. So then uh, we can write uh, the all the energy equations will be something like y equal to x square. Now following uh, let us first follow the uh, parabola for which is for say uh, uh, minus uh, let us just try to figure out what is first the reorganization energy lambda. If you follow the acceptor parabola 
So suppose, uh, let me just draw on this side. Suppose I have a parabola like this, and this is the center of the parabola. Suppose this is x0, and I'm asking this question, what is the value at, uh, say, x1? So what I will do is that the value, uh, this thing, suppose this is y, and uh, this is uh, basically uh, y1, this is y2. So I can just write y1 minus y2 is nothing but uh, if I just change the notation here as x2 and x1. So it is basically x2 minus x1 square. So in the same token, I'm writing that uh, y1 minus y2 in this case is the lambda. So uh, the reorganization energy lambda is nothing but, let me use some different color for the equations. So the reorganization energy in this case is nothing but x double prime minus x prime. Uh, so the uh, again the lambda, uh, the x prime here uh, or the uh, other coordinate as you can see is basically 0. So let me use the same notation as I'm following x prime minus 0, double prime minus 0 squared. So this is nothing but x double prime squared. So similarly, if you, uh, this is following the acceptor parabola. Similarly, we can follow the donor parabola and we can easily figure out that this delta G dagger is nothing but uh, if you follow this thing, it will be x prime minus zero square. So that is nothing but x prime square. So ideally for this, uh, reorganization energy, if we follow exactly the way I have drawn, it is uh, basically the originator as uh, x uh, double prime, so it will be 0 minus x double prime square, but since we are squaring it, it is uh, the same. Now we have already uh, expression for lambda and delta g dagger, so then uh, what we are left with is, uh, now think about it, like uh, what will be uh, this gap, so delta g dagger uh, plus this uh, negative of this uh, free energy change. So delta g dagger minus delta g zero. So basically this energy gap now we are talking about. Now following again uh, we can actually uh, use uh, this for any uh, to evaluate that since these are all parabolas we can actually use it for any uh, energies. Now you can easily see that uh, this following the acceptor parabola, we can say that uh, again you just follow this x2 minus x1 thing. So this is nothing but uh, the value of the acceptor parabola here minus value of the acceptor parabola here. So all I have to take is that x prime minus x double prime square of that. And that uh, I now can expand, so it will be nothing but uh, x prime squared plus x double prime squared minus 2 times x into x prime, x prime into x double prime. Now we can actually substitute the values of x double prime and x prime squared. Uh, so x prime squared I know that it is delta g dagger and uh, then what we have here is uh, x double prime squared is nothing but the reorganization energy lambda. And uh, then I also have uh, the 2x x prime so that I can just write it as like this. It's not x x prime, it is x prime and x double prime. So we can actually get a very uh, simplified relation that we can see here that this delta g dagger term cancels out. So what we have is that 2x prime x double prime, I'm just writing the expression for this term is nothing but lambda plus delta g zero and then I can solve it for x prime. So x prime is nothing but lambda plus delta g zero divided by 2x double prime and x double prime again is uh, nothing but uh, the square root of lambda but we are just keeping it like that and uh, so x prime is uh, we, all we want is this quantity delta g dagger because remember that we are going to use the uh, Iring equation for this. So this equation where actually I have delta g dagger. 
So the expression for delta G dagger as we see here is nothing but x prime square. So I have to take the square of this uh, entire thing which is lambda plus delta G 0 squared divided by 4 x double prime squared but I know that x double prime squared is nothing but the uh, reorganization energy. So I have to write it as lambda plus delta G 0 squared divided by 4 lambda. So we have already got an expression for delta G dagger. So the rate constant or the expression for the rate constant will be k is e to the power minus uh, delta G dagger by uh, RT or if I am talking about uh, not in terms of one mole so I can use KBT relation also but let us just use the RT uh, expression with uh, KBT by H prefactor. So this is nothing but KBT by H e to the power minus lambda plus delta G 0 squared divided by 4 lambda. So this is the expression uh, we get uh, for Marcus theory. Now this is not a very uh, rigorous derivation of Marcus theory. There has been a uh, few uh, approximations that we make and uh, those are uh, basically there is no tight coupling uh, between these uh, electronic uh, states of the donor and the acceptor and also this will hold if the donor and the acceptors are not too close uh, with each other. So now we are going to see what is what are the consequences of the Marcus theory. Now uh, everything, uh, if I keep on increasing the delta G zero, will uh, the, the how the rate constant behaves will depend on this uh, interesting uh, I mean uh, relationship between delta G zero and the lambda. Now suppose uh, we will consider four different scenarios where we'll be uh, using uh, this uh, uh, Marcus theory. Now what are these four different scenarios? Suppose actually I have a high negative values for uh, let's say or slightly uh, positive value for delta G0. Now uh, what do you mean by that? So uh, let us think that uh, the parabolas look like something like this. So I was using a different color so let me also stick to the same color. So situation number one is I have donor parabola like this and then I have acceptor parabola which is situated like this and then another situation where I have the donor like this and the acceptor is like this. So in these two cases what we see here is that uh, the this term which is basically lambda plus delta z0 this term. So what is the sign of this term? Now lambda is always positive. Now if uh, the way I have drawn here uh, in the first figure as well as in the second figure is that this delta z0 is positive in the first figure. In the second figure it is slightly negative. So if it is slightly negative or positive overall this term is greater than 0 for 1 and 2. So then what will happen if I increase the delta G 0 in this case. Uh, so the reaction rate actually decrease uh, because it is a highly negative number as we can uh, see it will be 4 lambda into RT. So with uh, so the if I just plot the reaction rate with uh, delta G 0 we will see that uh, in this zone if I have uh, uh, relationship between this uh, free energy and the reorganization energy something like that so that this term is always positive then I will have always e to the power minus uh, negative so the reaction rate is not very high. Now uh, the reaction rate will become maximum when this uh, lambda is perfectly uh, balancing the delta G0. Uh, in that case uh, if I want to draw the parabola it will be something like uh, this. I have a donor parabola and I have the acceptor parabola right here. Now you can see this is the situation 3 where I have the maximum rate. So uh, the reaction rate will be maximum but you can think also in this way that uh, this is basically uh, the cross point is right at the bottom of the donor. So uh, I have zero activation energy. 
this is very clear from this picture so delta g dagger itself is zero and uh, or mathematically you, you say that the activation energy is nothing but uh, the uh, the reorganization energy is nothing but equal to the uh, negative of uh, the uh, free energy change in this reaction and then uh, if i move this uh, parabola so the what i'm doing i mean in this drawing is that i have a donor parabola and i have an acceptor parabola so as if i started the acceptor parabola here and then i'm actually moving it down so uh, then if i move it further down then i'll actually uh, basically i'm increasing the delta g0 further then i'll hit a very very interesting situation where i'll have a situation like this because i'm moving it down the red uh, parabola now you see that in this case what will happen the uh, delta g0 actually is so high negative that uh, the lambda the reorganization energy is much smaller and uh, the lambda plus delta g0 together is again negative and then the e to the power uh, uh, this uh, term will again uh, become uh, uh, the negative and then will have uh, less uh, activation energy. So in the fourth case is very interesting. Now what we see here is that uh, the uh, lambda plus delta g0 again will be very much uh, ne uh, ne uh, positive in the sense that uh, in this case the delta g0 is highly negative. Uh, it's not slightly negative and uh, the uh, positive uh, then actually we have the uh, positive region of this uh, uh, Marcus uh, theory and then the reaction rate will again uh, fall because uh, so we have uh, the fourth situation here. Now let us consider the fourth and most interesting uh, situation. So uh, before going to that let me actually write the uh, conditions for all of them. So in the first case uh, we had uh, first and second case uh, we had uh, this and uh, for the third case we had uh, lambda plus uh, delta z0 was actually 0. So we had maximum rate. And now we are considering uh, another situation where uh, basically we are moving the acceptor parabola much down so that I have a crossing somewhere here. Now in this case delta G0 is very very negative and if it is very very negative lambda plus delta Z0 maybe I can write it here for case 4. lambda plus delta z0 is negative here and since we are uh, considering uh, actually square of that term again that is a positive number and then what we will have again the reaction rate will fall as we increase the delta z0. So if I plot actually delta z0 versus the reaction rate we will have a very very interesting plot. So this is delta g0 this is the uh, reaction rate. And if delta G0 is small or uh, negative or slightly negative as we uh, discussed, so the reaction rate will first uh, increase and then at a perfect uh, positioning of the uh, reorganization energy with respect to the delta Z0, we will see a maximum reaction rate. But then again, if we keep on increasing the delta Z0, which means actually uh, the uh, this, uh, this is more and more uh, positive or more and more negative in either case we will have uh, the drop in the uh, reaction rate. Now this region uh, is uh, basically uh, known as a Marcus inverted region and uh, for a long time people found that uh, when I am having uh, this kind of situation like the situation 1 and 2 where uh, delta, uh, lambda plus delta G0 is positive meaning that delta G0 is uh, slightly negative or delta G0 is uh, positive meaning this region it was well known uh, to people but this region was a question and we had to wait for nearly 30 years to find that uh, actually there is a inverted region that the reaction rate uh, it was contrary to the belief that if I decrease the uh, free energy gap so probably the reaction rate will increase but what Marcus theory showed no actually the reaction rate will again fall in this region not actually increase 
if I further decrease the free energy uh, between the reactant and the products. And uh, this is nicely explained in this uh, way uh, the, we uh, derived the parabolas. And then uh, this region was unknown until in uh, 1986 uh, uh, or so when uh, and co-workers uh, found that uh, yes experimentally they verified that this uh, inverted region in Marcus theory that was explained in Marcus theory or that was basically uh, uh, Marcus actually predicted this region that inverted region exist and they uh, found it experimentally and then in 1992 Marcus was given uh, the Nobel Prize in chemistry for this uh, fantastic work. So uh, let us summarize that uh, what we discussed under this section. So we talked about uh, the dynamic effect of uh, solvents and we first talked about solvation, uh, solvation by uh, polar solvents and there we talked about that as uh, what the polar solvents does is that what a polar solvent does to a solute is that it stabilizes its uh, electronic energy states but this stabilization happens over time. So uh, what will happen here is that if we can collect the emission from each of these state as the system is stabilizing due to reorganization of the solvent. I will get the fluorescent spectrum coming from the blue edge uh, to green and to red edge uh, which is evolving over time and uh, that time evolution of the fluorescent spectrum directly correlates with the motion of the solvents around the solute molecule. So uh, that we know uh, talked about the dynamic stoke shift or time result fluorescent stoke shift measurements and secondly we talked about uh, electron transfer and under electron transfer we talked about uh, first the uh, inner sphere electron transfer when uh, um, ligand which is a part of the inner coordination sphere can actually uh, participate directly in, in the electron transfer reaction as if it is mediated by a ligand exchange uh, I mean uh, the uh, for, and by formation of a, of a mu uh, bridging complex uh, and as opposed to the outer sphere electron transfer where actually the electron inner sphere is intact but somehow this uh, uh, electron get is transferred through space and that was described by uh, Marcus theory and where we saw that uh, this uh, Marcus theory uh, shows uh, I mean uh, very correctly actually accounts for the fine balance between the free energy and the reorganization energy. So uh, long story short this free energy uh, between the reactant and the product it does not always mean that if I have a smaller and uh, suppose what we are discussing uh, so far is that whether the uh, uh, this free energy thing or uh, let us say I have a donor and then I acceptor and then if the acceptor has a higher free energy this was uh, case 1 or slightly negative uh, free energy. So this was case 2 and then I have a very high uh, free energy or so where actually it is uh, we can actually have uh, the uh, zero uh, activation energy and then very very high but actually again I will have a uh, uh, like uh, decrease in the reaction rate and uh, everything uh, if here in this case we are plotting with respect to the uh, free energy only it is negative it is uh, then more negative and it, it is more negative something like that and uh, then uh, the crucial factor here is not the free energy alone but the lambda the reorganization energy and for all these plots uh, we said that the lambda is kind of constant in this case and we just uh, varied the free energy by varying the uh, just uh, vertically moving the acceptor parabola with respect to the donor parabola and if we do that then we figured out that at a perfect uh, balancing condition the reaction rate will be maximum when the reorganization energy perfectly uh, I mean uh, basically counteracts the free energy uh, of the reaction. Uh, however, if the free energy of the reaction is even more negative you, you will not gain in the rate co in uh, increasing the rate constant actually the rate constant will drop and that uh, is successfully captured in Marcus theory. So we will stop our uh, discussion on the uh, uh, these uh, reaction uh, dynamics uh, di or re reaction dynamics in solution portion. So where we uh, have covered a uh, great deal of uh, reactions starting from the diffusion uh, limited reactions and then uh, we also talked about the reactions between ions and then we uh, talked about uh, briefly 
the dynamic role of solvents and again one can ask the, how, how this is measured we did not discuss again this uh, dynamics uh, how this is uh, measured uh, one thing we mentioned when we talked about the kinetic measurements is the TCSPC technique and uh, by TCSPC technique one can actually uh, measure the uh, uh, simply by electronics how uh, how to basically uh, get the fluorescence spectrum or construct the fluorescence spectrum at different time from that you can actually calculate the solvation time correlation function uh, there are also sophisticated techniques like fluorescence up conversion and many other techniques that we did not discuss and electron transfer for example you can uh, uh, study with uh, say pump probe technique where suppose uh, after electron transfer you generate an acceptor species and this acceptor species has a uh, suppose uh, 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 characteristic absorption so you can initiate the electron transfer with some uh, some optical pulse or, or infrared pulse and then you can actually watch how this uh, acceptor band is increasing over uh, time and uh, how this acceptor absorbance is uh, increasing and from that actually you can uh, calculate the rates of the reaction and you can actually uh, infer, uh, you can have a lot of insights regarding the dynamics. So uh, we'll stop our discussion on these uh, reaction dynamics in uh, liquid phase here and uh, then uh, the, we'll, we'll uh, give you a summary uh, of the course uh, afterwards. Thank you.